Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson 17. We are using visual models to add and subtract two fractions with the same units, including subtracting from one whole. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of our problems tonight. I'm going to try to do, I'm not going to do any of number one. I'm going to leave that one for you to handle on your own. Uh, that's 1A and 1B. But I am going to look at uh, one of the problems in number two. Let's take a look at that one. All right, let's read together. We are going to solve. Model each subtraction problem with a number line and solve by, count, by both counting up and subtracting. Interesting. Okay, so we can do this a couple of different ways. Let's take a look at the first way. One of the first things that I think we could do is that we could take that first number, 1 and 1 fifth, and we could treat it like a number bond. And we could say we could break that into the whole and the part. Let's see, the one whole, if we're working in fifths, is going to be five fifths. And the other part is going to be one fifth, right? So now I can tell, if I couldn't already, I can tell that one and one fifth is actually just five fifths plus one fifth, or six fifths. So I could write this problem as six fifths minus two fifths. And now it's a fairly straightforward subtraction problem, right? We're working in the same units, fifths and fifths. So we had six fifths. We subtracted two-fifths, so we would end up with four-fifths. Now, another way we could do this is that we could do a number line. Let's go ahead and do a number line. And let's start that number line from zero. We'll go through one, right? But we know we have to go higher than that because we know we've got this number that's greater than one. So let's go all the way out to two here. Okay. And let's see. How would we display our first number? Our first number is 1 and 1 fifth. So literally, it's 1 and 1 fifth. So let's see, we'll divide up this area. We'll divide up both areas, let's see, into fifths. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Awesome, now we've got fifths. So at the beginning, we had uh, 6 fifths. So that's out here, right? 6 fifths. 6 fifths, or 1 and 1 fifth. And we subtracted the number two-fifths. Two-fifths. Let's see, where would that be? Well, let's see. These are all fifths. So one, two-fifths. I'm going to make a little mark there. Right? That was two-fifths. And then we can measure the distance between those, because if we took this length and subtracted this length, we'd end up with this length. So let's go ahead and draw our line to get from here to there. would take us, let's see how far. That's one, two, three, four-fifths. So we would say plus four-fifths. So we can work this as addition or subtraction, but we could either say that two-fifths plus four-fifths is six-fifths, or six-fifths minus two-fifths is four-fifths. We could work out all kinds of different addition and subtraction problems. But either way, we're going to solve the difference between those two, and the difference, the distance between these two, is four-fifths. And that allows us to have solved this problem both with a number line and with subtraction of like units. Let's take a look at one more problem. Let's take a look at problem number three and read that together. Find the difference in two ways. Use number bonds to decompose the total. Part A has been completed for you, and I've obscured it here. So we're just going to work on number three, part D. And here we've got two parts, and we've got a subtraction problem. We have one and two sevenths minus five sevenths. So one thing we're going to do right off the bat is that we are going to decompose one and two sevenths into a number bond. And we would say, since we're working in sevenths, how many sevenths make up our whole? Well, that would be seven sevenths. So we're going to say seven sevenths and two more sevenths. So that's one way we can think of our, uh, with using a number bond, we can think of one and two sevenths as seven sevenths and two sevenths. And if we think of it that way, we can add these together to get like units. And we can say that seven sevenths plus two sevenths equals nine sevenths. Excellent. So that gives us just this part. We've converted basically this mixed number to an improper fraction. And now we can do, we can go ahead and do the subtraction that we've been asked. We've been asked to take that number and subtract five sevenths. And happily now we have the right units. We have nine sevenths that we started off with. We've subtracted five sevenths. And that leaves us with a simple problem of nine minus five, all working in sevenths. So nine minus five is four and we're working in sevenths, so we have our answer, four sevenths. But there's another way of thinking of this problem. There's another way of thinking of this problem, and that is that we could break this mixed number into the whole and the part, and then we could subtract 
the, this from the whole, and we'd end up with our answer that way. So let's do let's think of it that way. We could start off with seven sevens, and we could subtract the five sevens, and that would be seven minus five, all working in sevens. So that would be two sevens, and then we'd have to add on this other little piece, right? This part right here, because we've taken this part, subtracted that part, and we've left this last little piece. So we need to go ahead and add that piece back in. So that's two sevenths that we got from taking the whole minus our uh, our subtraction. We've got that part, and now we've got this other part, two sevenths. We'll add that back in, two sevenths, and we add our lake units, and we now have four sevenths. So we get the same answer, obviously, either way. We get four sevenths, four sevenths. And we can do that with either one of our methods. We can either grab all of our parts together into an improper fraction like this, and then do the subtraction, or we can do the subtraction right off the beginning. We can make, or we can convert into a whole, or convert a whole into sevens, subtract our part, get our, uh, our subtraction result, and then add in the remaining part that we had left on the side. So either way, we're going to end up with four sevens, and you should be able to do that problem for any of the other problems in number three. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. See you again next time.